Hello and welcome back to another episode of the North America Gaelic Games podcast. Today we want to welcome Ryan Mulcahy from Butte, Montana. Uh, Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you for tuning in and uh, hope all's well in Montana. It is great. Thanks, Gareth, for having me. This is a wonderful opportunity. Perfect. Uh, well, Ryan, just before we get talking about the club, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, obviously being from uh, the Montana area. And what got you into the GEA all all the way out there? Oh, it's it's a little crazy. Uh, so uh, just a little about myself. Uh, I was adopted into an Irish family. Um, I'm the 53rd or 54th grandchild. It's still up for debate with the family tree. We haven't quite figured out which one I am, but I think I am the youngest grandchild. Extremely huge extended family. Um, wonderful Irish family adopted me. Um, I was born up northern Montana. Uh, I've been in Montana my whole life. Haven't haven't left yet. Left a couple of times. I just didn't stay left. I kept coming back. Um, so um, yeah, that's that's a little bit about me. Um, big big. Oh, were Irish they off? Family. Were they right off the boat? Were they right off the boat Irish? They were. My my grandma my grandma was off the boat, came here and then went back and then came back. Um, nice. Where were they from? Yeah. Uh, Cork area. All County Cork. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So what, so what got you into the GEA? Uh, you know, um, two things. My wife was way more into it than me. And so she got me into it. Um, and she got me interested into it. And then the Missoula guys, uh, really got me into it. So my wife, when she was 18, she was, uh, she went to Ireland and her host father was John Dowling. And he was a coach um, in, uh, I got, I got I wrote this down so I get it right, in New Ross, but on the Kilkenny side of the river. And he was a principal math teacher at uh, Good Council School. So she went over there when she was 18 and spent, and spent I think, six months over there um, as an exchange student. So she was way more in depth and knowledgeable about hurling long before I was. Um, when she came back, and we got well, she came back long before we got married. Um, after we got married, and she introduced me and told me all these things about Ireland. Um, obviously, I still hadn't been. I still haven't been to Ireland. Didn't know what her didn't really know what hurling was when she was telling me about it. Um, but it sounded pretty cool. She was she she was telling me. Um, like she was Croke Park almost off the plane when she went there. Um, like she got to see it right away. Pretty impressive story. Um, but uh, she was she was over there and she got um, she always talked about it and she always she always talked about about hurling and um, about that time, sometime after um, the Missoula guys had been doing the Irish Studies program came over to Montana. Uh, the NCGAA and the Missoula college team got going really big. It was like 2014-2015, they bag, banged out those two national championships right away um, and kind of set the stage for Montana hurling. Um, so they got this great idea. An old lad from Butte was living over in Missoula, and he's like, well, Butte has to have hurling. It just... He he was convinced, uh, Miles Malone, he was convinced that Butte had to have hurling. So he started bringing a St. Patrick's Day game over here. So around 2017, he would come up, they started doing exhibition games, the college team and then what is now the Thomas Marr team um, over in Missoula. So I went, uh, I think it was 2017, I went and watched the first match. Um, I didn't play. I went to the little, I went to the little shindig they had. I went to the party, watched the match. Um, was wonderful. Thought it was really cool. Then Miles comes, this guy Miles Maloney. You'll hear a lot about Miles as you learn about Montana. He's my favorite historian. He's the person I have to contact if I need some info on the GAA or something else. But he came over to the library and did a did a public lecture on hurling. Like just a lecture. Um and he had a hurl and he had a slitter and he just sat up there, you know, not on the field, couldn't pick the hurl up or anything. Well, he was, but we couldn't. Um, but he, he got my eight-year-old son to listen strategically to his boring lecture about hurling. <laughs> um, my little guy loved it. Um, and that's kind of where it sparked, right? Right after that, I knew I really kind of liked it. 
So after that, and we have story... our friend. We have our friend Tanner as well. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming who was part of that college uh, team. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, he was part of that. He was part of that. I'm pretty sure he was on that original team uh, of the first or second year that got that national championship. Um. So, but after that, after that lecture, um, my little guy's so interested in it. I'm like, well, I gotta kind of pick this up. But nothing happened for a while. Like that lecture happened. The St. Patrick's Day match happened. It was great. We had fun. We watched it. And then uh, about September, sometime in September of 2018, Miles calls me up and he says, he says, we're going to do a tournament in Butte on October 7th. And he's like, I need you to get as many guys as you can. So I'm like, okay. I hung up the phone with him. I called, I Facebooked people. I called six people. Rounded up like six people um, to play in this tournament. Um, and it was a sevens tournament. And he pulled, he grabbed the guys from the Northwest. So the Northwest Division came down, Portland came down, Seattle came down. Um, and we just threw, they just, they just threw us on teams and told us to play. We had, we didn't, we had no idea what we were doing. It was hilarious. I had, I think I had six weeks to prepare, maybe not even that, a month to prepare. I didn't even know where to order a hurl, so I uh, I just typed in hurls, somehow got onto Barry Reynolds' website, ordered six hurls from Barry, had them shipped over. Um, he's treated me really well since then. I think he's even given me some free ones. And uh, we picked up the hurls, and for the first couple of weeks, we just went out on grass, and none of us knew what we were doing. But we figured if we could kind of swing a bat, we could kind of hit the hurl. and hit the slitter and that, that was it. That's how it started. We had, we were, we, were, we had no it's idea. Right. I, I'm, I'm still, I, I still don't know what I'm doing out there. I'm still <laughs> gradually picking it up too. So we had a game on Saturday and oh my God, you know, like I come from a football background and, you know, you think like, okay, well, you know, the positions a little bit, you know, a little bit about, you know, the spacing, the, you know, the backs, the forwards, but yeah, if you can't pick that hurl up or the slitter up, you're done for. So oh, but I need to get back. I, I need to get back to him wall ball. <laughs> I was really, really, I fooled myself because, you know, I was practicing alone. And when I'm alone, I'm really, really, really good. Like I can pick it up magically when I'm the only one there. <laughs> but you put a defender on me and it all, it all changes. <laughs> um, but so the, the tournament, just to, I won't, the tournament could be a long story. But so October, first week of October comes around. It turns in, we play the first tournament um, in classic Montana weather. It's less, it's it's below freezing. I think it maybe was 12 degrees that morning, and there's an inch of snow on the ground. We shoveled the sidelines with shovels so we could see. By the end of the first match, the field was clear. We did run around enough to clear the field after the first match, but it was freezing. So the first Butte tournament was Sub well, it wasn't quite sub zero, but it was single digit temperatures um, and miserable. But God, was it fun! And uh, if you hurling, think if, hurling in the cold is uh, a different animal. It was. It was. My our hands. We couldn't feel our hands. We couldn't catch the ball. We couldn't catch the slitter. It was. It was terrible. I, I learned. I don't know who brought this up. I don't know if it was an Irish thing, an Oregon thing, but. Uh, tomato soup out of a coffee mug, drinking it just straight out of the cup is the best thing ever. I'll know that now. Once it's done, once it's in the winter, and we have a, you know, we get out there and start pucking and kicking the ball around. Now we know there's the secret. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's it. That's that's really the story. That's where it, a little badgering from the Missoula guys, uh, a little bit of love for my wife, and that's that's kind of what brought hurling to Butte. And as we decided you know we're trying to figure out well now we want this hurling team now we want to play we didn't really know what we we're doing so we did some research we found a gaelic football team the wolf tones in butte uh, so we just mo we modeled the name after them i have an old picture of them um, we found some old news articles on them um, so there was a wolf tones team in butte in the early 1900s um, 
So oh, we just wow. kind of took it like that long back yeah. ago. Um, you, you know, I'll have to check. I'm gonna. It was a long time ago. I have the picture in the. I have the old picture that I'm pretty sure has a date on it. I'll have to look. It's I'll funny because it. that's a very that's a very similar story with us as well out in Worcester. Uh, our so Worcester Fenians when it came back uh, came back to life. Um, I think it was like 2008, 2009. Uh, I think it was around that time. I think it was on the crest. Um, it's on some of our crests. But back in the 80s, 90s, they used to actually have a football team. And that's where it brought back the Worcester Fenians. So that's pretty cool. That's a very similar story. That yeah. same thing. It was a football team and brought back to life by Hurling. And, you know, you know, that seems to be the common thread around the U.S. and all over. You know, junior clubs, Hurling clubs popping up left, right and center, which is, you know, phenomenal to see. Because, you know, when you think about it, starting a football team can be a lot easier. You know, hurling is, I, I have so much admiration for a junior club starting hurling just because of the, the, the difficulty to really break. It takes, it takes, I'm still trying to figure it out. No, <laughs> I'm, it, I'm out in Worcester, I'm out in Worcester here now for three, four years and I'm still figuring out hurling. Uh, yeah. But you know what? I love it. You know, and that's where, um, again, I have a lot of admiration for junior clubs around the U.S. starting hurling clubs and. Hence, we're, hence our, what we're trying to do is promote not just football as well, but hurling clubs and what they're doing uh, and what other clubs are doing that's successful, that's helping them with the growth. Uh, but with that being said, can you tell us a little bit about the club? Uh, so obviously then you guys became the Wolf Tones. Um, can you tell us a little bit more of that history? Yeah, um, I mean, the history is just, I mean, we're, we're 2018, so, and through, so we're, we're, we're just still, we're still building that history. Uh, and you know there had been no hurling or football in the area so um for so for so long you know it's it's, it's super exciting to be that that piece of history to to bring it back um, and not really knowing uh what you're doing the adventure of like building something that's so new to you and even all the members on the team um so out of those six, everyone is still involved, um, some a little bit more than others, but all of the six original members are still um, in town. If they, if they don't play on the field, they still uh, they still buy us um, jerseys and slitters or do a little something for us. So um, we've been able to keep them in the loop, and and that that speaks to I think you know how demanding you know the time to get really good um, at hurling is. Um, you know, they, some of our guys, you know, we all have jobs. We, you know, just like in Ireland, it's, it's a secondary thing, but it's such a great secondary thing to do. You want it to be your primary thing all the time and you're always trying to do it, but it's so hard. Um, so I think, yeah, that, that's why we have some of our original six are playing and some of them are, some of them are just hanging out. Um, they're, they're, well, they're there. I think you actually. I think you touched on some of the challenges. I mean, you talked about those sub-zero temperatures, you know, but, oh, yeah. um, you know, what are some of the challenges you guys face? Obviously, you know, in where we are in Massachusetts, obviously we've got a big influx of Irish people. You know, we have the J1 summer kids that come over, you know, a lot of, you know, obviously everybody knows the Boston Irish history. What would be your biggest challenges out there um, oh, cool. for you guys? Yeah, we have, well, we have no, you know, we have, no natural born Irish guy in town wanting to play on the team. So they come and they help us out from, from other places, but they don't stick around and stay. So um, it's trying to get a bunch of American boys to, to pick up the sport and love this sport. And it, it doesn't take much for some, but it takes a lot for others. Um, didn't take much for me, but I, I had little ties and strings all throughout my history with my family. Um, they just kind of all connected once it started going. But, uh, yeah, that's a big challenge for us. We don't have anyone here that's been doing it or playing it their whole life or that plays it a lot. It's 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 brand new to everybody, it's super brand new. So that's a big challenge. Um, people get into it and they really like it and they, they're starting to see it. So um, I can see that changing. But, um that's the, that's the challenge. We don't have anyone that really has a solid foundation that lives here in Butte. And I have yet to recruit anybody to come and live here in Butte because it's cold 
and it's a little miserable. And uh, the other challenge is the playing season. We have a short season. Um, it can kind of go long now that the falls are getting nicer, but we don't have any big indoor facilities, so we get really limited. Um, we we try our best to mess around in small gymnasiums during the year, um, but they they they're hard to get into and. It's so our our winters vary, um, so it's it's tough to keep interest with uh, my new guys in in Butte because I can't I can't play them year round, um, and we're so far we're pretty isolated. Um, the closest team to us uh, to us obviously is Missoula, um, which is two hours away, um, which isn't bad. We've been doing a lot better about getting small scrimmages with them all the time. But the rest of our division is spread out by eight-hour travel times, um, minimum. So we are really to, to get to tournaments. We're pretty isolated. Uh, and it's not like you guys have, um, you know, Logan, uh, Logan Airport, uh, O'Hare, Chicago. You know, it's still a smaller airport, so a lot of connection flights too. Um, it is. Yeah. yeah. It's, and so today is uh, Wednesday, June nineteenth. Uh, when I talked to you over the phone yesterday, it was snowing. So no wonder and why right I wouldn't now, be playing. <laughs> yeah, but guess what? It turned out it it totally switched today. So today turned out beautiful at fifty eight degrees and sunny. So now it's wonderful. Um, that, so. that is that is that is torturous. I mean, <laughs> I, it, the winters here are long enough. Like uh, we. We've been counting down the days of summer to start. And then the last three days, we've had a heat wave of almost 100 degrees, and now everybody's complaining. And it's like, you're probably over there like, what the hell are you guys complaining about? Uh, bring that over here so we can actually get outside more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Short season, other, yeah, that's a, that's just our other big challenge to, to kind of get us going and flying. I, I, mean, I just looked at flights to San Francisco for, for nationals, and, you know, it's going to cost me way more than it should you guys can fly from boston cheaper than i can fly to san francisco um even though that you guys are what two like how many hour flight like three hour flight three hour flight less but flying out of montana is terrible yeah anything it it's 500 or more if i want to fly out of montana wow yeah wow. sometimes 300 it's but it's usually yeah it's i i looked at san francisco to get to nationals it, it was 450 dollar ticket for me to get to nationals how far of a drive? If I have the time, uh, San Francisco, I think, can be like 14, 12 hours, 14 hours. Doable if I have the time off. Let's book the party bus. <laughs> it's a good Let's idea. Book the party bus and head up there with a the team. That's it. Easy. Yeah. E easy. Sorted. Yeah. Uh, but what will you, so, uh, so you guys are obviously going to be traveling to nationals. What, uh, what divisions are you guys competing in? We're not going to compete in nationals this year. I'm just going to go. No, down. Um, no we're 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 not. We're just not ready yet. Um, I've got 13 players on the roster, and I got seven of those showing up consistently, and six showing up sometimes. And uh, that's that's one of my goals. We're we're going to get a team to be that competitive. Um, we're we're a ways away from it, but that's that's the goal. Um, we're looking for that. Those pieces well, of plates. Uh, I hope, uh, obviously, my goal uh, with a lot of this is to, you know, again, share the stories of a lot of these junior clubs. So, I mean, I hope that whatever material we do, uh, you know, some clubs are able to share their stories that help with potential recruiting because everybody's different and every no no one club is the same. You know, what we what we did to grow the club. It's probably completely different than what another place did. You know, you just kind of have to find what works for you guys. Um, but what has been working for you guys so far as like recruiting? Because I mean, coming from nobody with Irish background, a lot of people probably didn't know what hurling is. To even get that many players is a success by itself. So what what yeah. has been successful for you guys uh, promoting the game? The the, the consistent never missed except for COVID St. Patrick's Day game. Like we do it rain or shine, snow or no snow. Um, we have a turf field, so it doesn't matter. And the the, can't, the college always will open up the turf field. Not for us. They do it for the football team, but we like to think they do it for us because we're about the first ones ever on it. Um, 
And we have big, we have an Henri Ra festival every August here in Butte that has grown and grown and grown and gotten really big. And we volunteer with them and we get in with the AOH and they have really helped um, give us goal. They've given us a venue to be at once a year for the last five years. That's really helped us get our name out there and get going and get our get people to see us. So it's funny you talk about the AOH. Um, that's something that we've actually been talking about a lot lately, uh, which is almost that missed partnership between local AOHs. Um, yeah, AOHs are all around the country, you know, with Irish heritage, and yeah. you know, I think as a whole we need to do a lot better you know not just you know one place but everywhere to really because those are you know those are the people that have you know the AOH has some of the older communities some of the older Irish communities that have sons daughters grandkids that potentially play other sports and love their Irish heritage you know obviously you talk about yourself you know uh, Mm -hmm. with your family first thing they talk about the hurling is like brilliant let's get into it right or let's get let's do something um but there is almost that missed opportunity with the AOHs, and I think uh, getting involved with them is a brilliant first step uh, for any for any club who's looking to grow, especially in Irish sport and Irish dance and the music, whatever whatever that is. Um, but other than that, what else are you guys doing in the community? Uh, like how how has the community embraced hurling for you guys? You know, really sporadic. They they. Every time we hold an event, Butte's a great community. If I ask somebody for help for the draft tournament, I don't get a no ever. Um, I get a yes. Um, The fields are free in Butte most of the time. I don't have to pay for a pitch rental. They they just give it to me. Um, You know, they're they're just that generous here in Butte. They they want to see things happening. And Butte's a Butte's an interesting place. It's a small town. It's a, it used to be a huge town. It was a boom town. It had 90,000 people at one time. Now it has 36,000. Um, and it's, it's always kind of on a little bit of a renaissance into, um, getting better and getting more things going and building the club at this time. Um, that's really showing, um, is the last year for the draft tournament, I went down to, uh, the M&M bar and cafe and they had just the the original building and it's a huge story the the building burnt down the year before it just burnt down and she spent or two years ago it burnt down and they were building they were just doing everything they could to rebuild it i went down and asked her for for some help and god forbid i know she didn't have any money to give us uh because she just had to rebuild her entire restaurant but she showed up at the field with guinness and jameson um, and didn't didn't ask didn't ask for a penny and that that's that's how the Butte community supports us. Um, if if they could just hand me players and force them to play, we would be immaculately staffed team. But uh, um, but they they support us almost. If I ask, they say yes. Um, and that's that's really what's kind of holding holding our group together. Well, let's uh, let's talk about um this draft tournament because one one i'm very interested in it i actually love the concept of it i love the whole idea of like you could come out there with five people and you are all in different teams and you get to kick the absolute living shit out of each other which (laughs) is always is always a great thing as much as uh where i grew up you know we a lot of uh a lot of the a lot of my best friends in school we also played on the other teams so, you know, we were yeah. good friends at school, but once we got into the field, kicked the absolute living shit out of each other, which is brilliant. Uh, yeah, which is why I love the, uh, the I love the concept of the tournament. But you know, not just this tournament. You know, I I I have to give a lot of um, a lot of kudos to the junior clubs uh, around the country, especially Harlan. Um, typically, when I first came out here in 2011, typically the football hurling season ran from maybe at the end of March and once nationals were done in August, done, done. And that was it. You know, there's, it's now you're seeing clubs like yourselves 
other clubs around the country putting on these sevens tournaments and uh, I think it's phenomenal for building the homegrown people. Uh, a lot of these junior clubs are finding a lot of success from these tournaments. Uh, hence why we want to promote this tournament for you guys, because I think it's a phenomenal idea and hopefully will pay tribute to future growth. Um, so you guys can get more hurlers in that field so we can get you to nationals next year, right? Um, that's that's, that's but, the goal. That's why so we're doing it. Tell yeah. us a little bit about the tournament, when it started, and uh, you know, just a little bit about it, because I'm very interested so, in it. So we started, you know, right right after we were all shut down for COVID. We were it was kind of at the tail end of COVID. The Northwest Division, we were on. I'm on the board of the Northwest Division, and we were just we were like, we got to get out and do something. And we, you know, that year was just a mess for everybody. We didn't know what we were doing. So Amon from Seattle, myself, we we he kind of he he mentioned a hockey tournament that had been done this way back back when he was younger and somewhere so we just decided well it'd be easier to travel alone and send a whole team so let's let's do it let's 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 do it in butte because the northwest division i mean seattle had nationals they were big enough already um portland was pretty big the red branch had grown quite well um Missoula had a pretty good following. Thomas Marr was built out of the um, the Grizz team. And the Northwest Division kind of wrapped around the Butte team and just said, let's do it in Butte. And that was the whole goal was to, and all wasn't for them guys, it, you know, it, it wouldn't happen. The division kind of wrapped around me and said, we're going to do it in Butte and let's do it. So we went with it. We rocked it. We came up with the idea. And then, we we had originally kind of kicked the idea around. The original plan was to um, maybe send the draft tournament to different cities in the division in the next coming years. I kind of I kind of got a little selfishly greedy, and I just stole it, and it's mine now. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so what? I, I what else? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, as far as the tournament, so it started off as a hurling tournament, but then quickly grew into, uh, you guys first, had, a, was it a football and hurling or? First first year was football and hurling. And actually okay. there were more, the first year we had more football registered than hurlers. And we played dual, and of course we we threw in the dual code and killed ourselves. I even played football and hurling. I, I, brutal, I mutilated myself in that tournament. Um but we played a lot of games that day, hurling, football, football to hurling. Um, I think it was six matches by the time we were done. I, we were beat. But the first year, it was, it, was, it was heavy on the football side, you know. And the Portland, it was mostly the division. It was really a division tournament. But that first year, we were stretched from coast to coast because we had Josh Crabtree, Crabtree from Florida, and we had Rory from L.A., and we had uh, – uh, David from um, Providence. So we had a really, we had a big clump of the Northwest Division, but we had these tentacles going out to everybody. Um, and then since our then, our friends and our friends in Providence, huh? Our, uh, yeah. yeah, David, our, our, David our big David, rivals. They are they your rivals? <laughs> I wouldn't say, everybody. yeah. I mean, we always have a good fun game against them. Uh, but yeah, no, they're they're doing great things down Rhode Island, and we actually. We'll be playing them in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so they'll be in our division for Junior C. So and I'm sure they're looking to get a good puck at us. And, you know, the feeling's probably mutual. But off the field, we have a great time together. And that's what it's all about. Nice. Nice. Um, Keep it between the yeah, lines. So, yeah. Yeah. And so so um, from that, um, the second year, the second year, um, we we kind of screwed up the dates and we kind of did it early in July. So the turnout just, everyone was at other tournaments. It was a bad time to do it. Um, but I was told I kind of had to move the tournament because apparently my first year I did it too close to nationals. Didn't know that. I shouldn't do that. I was pretty close to nationals when I did it the first year. Um, but we still got a pretty good turnout. Um, so I learned from that mistake and now we moved it to September, which I think is going to be really great for, for its future and 
and it's it's going to be consistent for September from now on. It'll be the last the twentieth of September or twenty seventh for for the entirety of its its whatever life it decides to live. It's going to stay there. Um, so, what preparations are going into this year? Uh, so, the, is the plan to have both football and hurling? Uh, what, what's the plan for this year? Uh, and then other activities that you guys are, because I see you guys are planning to do a puck fada as well. Yeah, um, perfect. We got football and hurling both both on the register and camogie um, or co ed. Um, we'll, we'll deal with rules and regulations when it comes to it. We'll figure out how to do that. We, we seem to figure it out in Montana very well. Um, we'll unsanction or whatever we have to do. I don't know. I don't care what we have to do. As long as people are here playing, getting people on the field in view, we'll make it happen. Um, but depends on who registers. If it's all if it's all football that registers, I will run a football tournament and tell the hurlers, see you next year. <laughs> but we'll we'll see both. Um, hopefully we have both. Um, I've got great refs in both codes coming down. I got Stephen Power coming down. I got Hud Wilkins coming down. Um, and somebody else just, I love this tournament. Paul, some Paul guy that I don't even know called me yesterday. He wants to come down. So I'm like, sweet, come on down. I'm like, he's like, How, wh- what are you going to give me? Or can you help us out? I'm like, well, I'll see what the budget is, but I can probably cover plane tickets. We'll, we'll get you down here. We'll find a way. Uh, and that's kind of how, that's, that's how I see her in, in Butte. Uh, you know, this tournament doesn't make us any money. I don't, I think I, I think it came out of my own pocket last year, and it probably will this year. Um, I try to keep the costs so low, just because asking everyone to fly across the country to come to Butte, Montana, can't charge you a bunch of money to play in a tournament. So I just want you to, I just want you to come down here, and I want to give you a really kick-ass Mesita jersey um, to do it. So um, that pretty much covers the cost of your entry fee. Uh, gets you the jersey. But then we do so wonderful to us. Um, we make it work. Um, so they'll be uh, with those great refs coming down. That's the planning. Um, this, we have a great soccer complex, so I can make full field pitches. I can go Irish pitch regulations, which is phenomenal. Uh, so last year and this year we're going to go. We're going to go full pitch, and we're going to go fifteen players, and we're going to do full thirty-five minute halves. Um, oh wow! So it's going to be full fifteens, huh? It's full fifteens. It's we did it last year and it worked out so great. Um, we put twenty on each team and did unlimited subs. Um, so you could you could you could do rolling subs. Um, so it doesn't matter what shape you're in, how old you are. Some of the over forties can come down to this tournament and, and be just fine here too, because because we'll let you sub in and out as many times as you want. Um, that's that's we, what I love about Junior C. Junior C yeah. is that roll in, roll out, and you know what it, you know what it does. It it takes away the so once you go up into the higher levels, you know you've got that thirteen, but you know you might make three subs, uh, three four subs, but it's almost you're taking away from them older older guys that just want to get in there and play a little bit as well. Like you know they want to get in, play a little bit, and get out when they need to. Kind of like that. Over here, they do it so well as the over over thirty over thirties over forties and over forty eight soccer. How no. it's not just rotating rotating systems, but how they get so many people to do it over forty eight leagues. They've got so many teams. Why? Because they love it. Because they can go in for five ten minutes. They don't have to play in ninety minutes and then not be able to walk for four days. So yeah. it's all about enjoying and keeping the people in. Like we'll have. You know, we have one or two of our guys that'll get in, and if they get in there for five, ten minutes, they are as happy out. They are happy as pig and shite. So yeah. they just yeah. want to be involved and involved to be able to go out there and say they've kicked the ball, and they love it. Yeah. So, yeah, and I'm doing so much better getting all the all the guys on the team are older and have kids and families already. I've struggled with the young. I haven't got the young guys yet. I haven't figured out how to pull the young the young athletes in you. Um, just have. That's something I have to, I have to work on for these next coming years is to get some of those younger guys because we're we're all pretty old. Um, I can't say how old I am, but I'm I'm another year older on Saturday. Um, I'm getting up there. Uh, they're gonna have to. What? 
change. But you know mind. what? I I <laughs> admire I admire your commitment to the growth. Um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people would have packed it in by now, but it seems like you're still battling all through it. And, oh, yeah. You know, more guys like you, uh, guys and girls, who you know, selfish, selflessly. Uh, put their a lot of their own time into doing things like this. So I know, I know for yeah. me, that's what the GAA community is all about: is that community spirit. And that's why I'm. That's why I'm still here and still doing it. Um, because the 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 community that over in Missoula is just wonderful, and and they keep it going. I'm an old rugby player, so it was great to come back to some form of a team sport. I didn't play any team sports uh, in high school. Um, I was a runner and a swimmer. Um, it wasn't until college I started playing rugby, and then now um, it's hurling. But um, that, that's I, I, I still love being out there. I'm surprised uh, you didn't pick up football. A lot of we got a lot of rugby guys that, know, pick a, that pick up football. And I think and it, it was kind of it was kind of just chance. It was what Missoula brought me. You know, they they didn't bring me football. They brought me hurling. You know, had they. You know, back then, had they brought me football, it might have been different. I might have just gone that way. But they brought me hurling, and that's that's what was handed to me. So that's what I kind of had to pick up. We had a young it's... lad, Connor, that was a – he's uh, – well, I forget what – he's over in the n northeast somewhere with somebody this year. Um, I forget who he's playing with. Um, but he came, and he was he was a footballer, but he hurled with us um, and, tried, and picked up hurling pretty fast. But if he would have stuck around in Butte, um, and not gone back east. We there might have been a chance for football here, but without him here, I just didn't have I didn't have the knowledge at the time to do two at once. I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> do you know what club he's with in the northeast? I'm not. I'm gonna have to go spy on Facebook um, and find out where he went. Um, Connor O'Neill, um, but he's an old Butte kid. He was he was a Butte kid. He's a Butte family kid. Um, hmm. yeah, Maybe he's a was. Maybe maybe he's in Worcester. Could be, could be. If he's in Worcester, he's more than welcome. <laughs> we I could will, always I use will, a couple more lads. I'll reach out to him and let him know. Um, I I got his Facebook connections. Um, but yeah. So how how can people how can people look into the event? How can they register? Just so um, Re you know, one thing we want to do is start putting clips, and so we can get to promote this event uh, because. I know I'm, I'm, if I can get the time, I will be there. Uh, AKA if I get the permission from the missus, um, I will I, be 100% there. Because I have a 10 year old that will babysit if you want to bring the whole family. And she <laughs> loves little kids. <laughs> um, registration's easy. It's up on the website. It's open. So just go to my website, thewolftones.club, um, fill out the form. Click submit. Um, tournament is is sixty dollars to enter. That's it. Um, I was gonna. It was eighty. Then I went about sixty, and then I posted it's gonna be sixty for a while. It probably will stay sixty the whole time. I don't think I'm gonna raise it up again. But uh, keep an eye on it because I do odd stuff sometimes. I might drop it to thirty for a day. Um, I'm known to do some silly things like that. So um, if you well, maybe, maybe let's just do this uh, for the next forty-eight hours. It'll go to thirty bucks. You can tell people that. I'll post it right All after right. this too. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll do a post, and anybody who registers, we'll we'll put it up with a post. Anybody who registers within the next forty-eight hours, uh, you you just tell me the price, and I'll put it up there, and we'll get people registering. Hopefully, we get people people registering for you. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do forty dollars for the next forty-eight hours. All right, deal. Awesome. Deal. We'll, we'll, put, go... we'll put we'll put that up. Uh, we'll put that up, and we'll put it up in a clip as well, just so uh, oh. we can get promoting it. But I know myself um, will be very interested in getting out there. Uh, one, just love getting to see different areas. Uh, obviously, you know we're going to San Francisco this year for nationals. Hopefully, our teams. Uh, yep. We have to make it there. I'll probably be going there regardless, just because it's San Francisco. Uh, we're not going to get the chance to get out there anytime soon. Yeah. And 
going out to play in different tournaments in different areas. And that's kind of my goal for the next couple of years is, you know, how many, you know, West Coast, they just did their sevens tournament there a couple of weeks ago. Um, I know Florida do a couple of sevens tournaments. You know, we want to get down to Nashville and play play them in a friendly game. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like those are the bonding experiences, that social aspect that I don't, I don't well, care about the ball. The ball will take care of itself. But the people yeah. you're going to meet, that's, you know, no, in that I, same GA community that, I, you know, really does interest me. Yeah, that's it. Um, the Nashville guys came down last year. Um, pretty much when I thought no one was going to show up and the numbers were going to be really low, the Nashville guys just like sent everybody. So they, they kind of rescued the tournament last year and they just came down and made it a blast. Um, yeah. So we're, we want to go down our, you know, we owe them a tournament where our plan is to head down there. Um, they're disappointed. They're heading up to Calgary this week and I was supposed to go with them, but I can't on the, the end of June. Um, I was planning on it, but a few things came up and I had to, I had to cancel and I made them cry. I think but, yeah, they're going to go have a blast up in Calgary. Uh, so what and, is, what is the goal? How many, how many players, what is the goal I, for that tournament? I'd love, I want to see 80 players here this year. That that's that's the pipe dream goal. I don't care if we don't make it, but that's what I want. I want I want four full teams of 20. Uh, and, let's try and, and let's what, try and make it happen. Um, yeah, and we could well, do two hurling teams, two football teams. We could do a co-ed. Um, we'll make it work one way or another. But I'd love to see 80 people here. Um, we have we have the room for two full size pitches, and we have other soccer fields, so we can do a soccer field, a little bit smaller pitch, even for football or for the co ed games. I mean, we we're pretty adaptable, but I've got the field space to put on some pretty fun stuff all in one area. So so that's the goal. The goal is eighty. Um, we're gonna come down the night before, um, and that's like I said, this is a social tournament. My goal of doing the tournament, that's why I stole it from everybody the division, I said, I want it to be in Butte every year. It's because I want to meet everybody in the GAA and I want them to come to Butte. Like I want them to come to the most Irish city in America. At least we claim it is. I'm not sure it's true, but sure. St. Patrick's day. We, 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 we will hands down say it's the most Irish city in the world. I've seen a couple and of large... pictures from the Paddy's day parade. It, it looks pretty, pretty insane there on some Paddy's day. Is. It's a huge party. Last, last year was, it was awesome. It was, it was massive. It was nice. The weather was nice. It was on a weekend. Um, but the night before the tournament, so Friday night, come down. We'll have dinner and a few drinks. You know, keep it mellow because you do have to play on Saturday. But it's fun as hell. Uh, get your Mesita jersey. Get your team. Meet a couple of people. Um, if your flight can't make it till the next day, that's okay. But it's cooler if you can be here on Friday night. Um, Saturday we play matches all day long, um, and then we go up to the pub, um, have dinner again, or just drinks. Last year we kind of sw switched it up, um, but there's an after party pub crawl um, always after the matches. There's two main bars you have to go to, and then I suggest three others. I forbid one, but no one ever listens to me, but there's one bar I forbid. We'll talk to you about that when you get here. Um, but the rest of them are those, pretty game. What one so, of those bars? Uh, Maloney's Pub, the sponsor bar Salancha, the new Irish pub Sean O'Donnell's that just opened up, or the three and the Knights of Columbus. So there's four mandatory bars you have to hit um, because they sponsor us, they take care of us, they do things for us. They, they they're part of the community that doesn't play on the field. Um, and the new the new Irish pub he he's great. Sean O'Donnell's just opened up. Um, and super welcoming. Um, we're we're gonna have some really fun things with them over the over the next year. Um, but they're they're only they're only three months old, so they just got here. Um, it's great. Well, Ryan, um, yeah, well, Ryan. Before we before we wrap up uh, again, I wanna I wanna thank you for your time and uh, for your commitment to growing the you know GF Gaelic Games in Butte. Um, you know, you're doing a lot of work there, uh, a lot of your own time to grow this tournament, to grow the, the, the club, the game, 
And, um, you know, I know the GA community needs a lot more people like you. And so keep up the great work. And before we wrap up, how can people help you guys out? Um, either by sharing the tournament details, sharing the page, how can they help you guys uh, help grow? Really, that's that's the big thing. Um, come down to the tournament. Um, share the tournament. Send, tell someone to go to the tournament. Yeah. Uh, you can always buy a T-shirt off our website. That helps us get some money to travel, but that's a little thing. Really, I think to grow hurling is if I can just get people, the more people I can get to this draft tournament every year, the more this community will see the matches, and that's going to change everything. So that's that's the best that anyone can do is just just uh, come on down. And if you can't come on down, send somebody down or um, – yeah, that's all I can think of. Uh, just put the word out that there's a little hurling team in Butte, Montana that's kind of isolated that could use a lot of GAA love. So just come, come see us. Well, Ryan, appreciate it again. And uh, we'll do our part trying to share that tournament. I know I'm going to do my best to be there. Um, I'm sure Connor won't be too far behind me. But if we can get a couple of people out there at the Montana for a weekend, I'm sure it's going to be a very good time. It's a great time. Great time to be in Montana. The fall is awesome. Um, if you want to see Montana, it's a great time to be here at the end of the, if you want to extend it and do a Montana vacation. The park is beautiful. Uh, it's kind of quiet down. So all sorts of loads of things to do in Montana at the time in September. It's kind of great, kind of great time. Well, you did touch on uh, Mesita as well. We Before we wrap up, we always want to thank uh, Mesita for all their hard work, uh, making sure that clubs are ready for nationals. Uh, and nationals is coming up very quick. Uh, yeah. So any teams that are getting orders in, I advise doing them now. Because uh, oh, it's no, no, no. too close, I, I, too close to comfort. Get I your short I, sock ready to go. The, the, fir the first year, uh, the jerseys didn't make it. <sighs> They came. They came four days late, and uh, uh, and and they see the guarantee. They, we we love them. They were like they tried their hardest, but I, I ordered them. A look, I cut the deadline pretty pretty close, and they they didn't come. Um, so I I had to mail all the jerseys out after the tournament. We we did get jerseys, but just our we the, our local t shirt shop printed us up jerseys overnight, which was phenomenal. But uh, yeah. That's the uh, one other thing. That's a good that you brought that up. To get the jersey of your size that you want, you need to register soon. Otherwise, you're going to get a large, and that's it. <laughs> please so, just don't please don't me just don't tell me it's large player fit. Just regular. No, fit. no. I, All right. Not enough people like player fit. <laughs> um, no, yeah, but that is another thing. So I, I'll be posting that too. Um, I'm gonna cut the deadline i'll kind of end the the deadline to register for the tournament is pretty much going to be masita's deadline to send the shirts okay but we got any, till september, any, so we're gonna any, we're looking any, to play until end of july any sneak peeks um you saw it you picked it so it's that one it's that one it's 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 the one you picked it's, nice jersey yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah. I will. You give me yeah, the word, it. I'll share it. No problem. That is a beautiful um, jersey. I, and I, I just thought of this today. I guess it's kind of, kind of thrown out there. But if you, if you want to buy a jersey to support the tournament and not come, um, I'll mail it to you. So that's that. That's going to be an option. I just it was kind of an idea. I just kind of threw around in my head today. I'm like, well, I've never done that before, but. We do it with all our other T-shirts, so why not? So I'll post that too. So if you just want to buy a tournament jersey and support it, that'll help fund the tournament, and you don't have to show up. And then people can talk about that beautiful jersey. Yeah, that's yeah. not that's not an oil rig. It's not an oil rig. It's a Gallus frame. All right, Gallus. It's a Gallus frame. We'll, we'll, drop the mic we'll make into the mic. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure we'll have a little description with that because I. Uh, I know when I first looked at it, I was thinking the same thing, and I'm glad you clarified it. But uh, I think we, I think we, we talked about it too. I, I love the, I love the jerseys that have 
meanings, uh, you know, local meanings in their jerseys. And I will say this is a beautiful jersey that Masita put together. And I will be, even if I'm not there, I will be ordering a jersey. Well, Ryan, thanks again uh, for coming on. Uh, again, wish you all the best with the tournament. And uh, again, thank you to Mesita. Thank you to USGA always for your support. And we wish you all the best in the coming months because it's going to come by pretty quick, that tournament. So yeah, start booking gonna... flights now. Do it. It's going to go fast. It's going to be a fun season. So, Well, thanks again, Ryan. I appreciate your time. Me too. Thanks, Gary.